Tina is a remarkable person on many levels. Professionally, I think she's fearless. The fact that she joined a rock band and was just learning, literally on the job, and showed no qualms about it and just got up there like she'd been playing that thing her entire life speaks volumes to what she's about. Tina Weymouth is a pioneer in the music business. A musician, composer, and producer, Tina Weymouth is the co-founder of Talking Heads and TomTom Tom Club, two music groups that were instrumental in creating new wave and hip-hop music. Tina Weymouth was born in 1950 in California, the third of eight children. Because her father was a career naval officer, the family moved around the world on a regular basis. In 1964, when Tina was 14 years old, her father brought home a guitar. That little Honer guitar became my best friend as a, as a miserable, self-absorbed teenager. And so I was just playing my guitar and singing songs and learning to play out of books. After graduating from high school in 1968, Tina eventually matriculated at the Rhode Island School of Design to study art. It was there she met her future bandmate and husband, Chris Franz. She already had a different boyfriend at the time, uh, but I was very persistent, and eventually their relationship ended and mine began with Tina. After graduating from RISD in 1974, Tina and Chris moved to New York City. I was interested in getting Tina involved in our band because she shared an aesthetic with us. We wanted to be what we called thinking man's dance music. I tried to persuade her to join the band for many months. One day, she surprised us by walking in the door with a, with a beautiful Fender Precision bass that she had been buying on layaway. When she came in with that bass guitar, I was just like, hallelujah. <laughs> I was very convinced by Chris that I did share their musical sensibility, and I would, I would bring something to the, the music. It's like a picture when, you, as an artist, I describe it visually, but you're looking in depth into the picture, and some things are in the background in the distance, and some things are in the foreground up front. Because Tina was trained as a painter, she's coming at playing bass very differently from traditional bass players. One of the first songs they work on is Psycho Killer. And the other day, actually, I asked Tina, how did you come up with that bass line? Because it's so memorable. She said, but Bernard Herman's from the soundtrack of Psycho. It's the shower scene with the stabbing. So our first show that we ever played was opening for the Ramones down at CBGB's, and everybody noticed Tina. When you look at the band, visually it's very striking. And even though David Byrne is the lead singer, and generally you would focus on the lead singer, I'm telling you that the men were all looking at Tina, and I believe that the women were looking at Tina too because they start thinking, well, geez, you mean women can actually be in rock bands? Talking Heads produced their first album in 1977. Rolling Stone magazine called it one of the definitive records of the decade. That same year, Tina and Chris were married in his home state of Kentucky. With Talking Heads, it took a lot less time than we thought it would to make it into the big time. We got there in two and a half years. With Talking Heads, we uh, changed the way people think about rock and roll and think about what a rock and roll band should be. Talking Heads released four studio albums and toured internationally for three years. Then, in 1980, Tina and Chris formed Tom Tom Club when David Byrne took a hiatus to work on solo projects. Tom Tom Club was my baby. I got to call all the shots. And the first single was Wordy Rapping Hood. Which went to number one in, I think, 17 countries. 
in the fall of, of 81, the single Genius of Love was released and it went gold. It was fabulous and it brought Talking Heads back together. What you gonna do when you get out of jail? I'm gonna have some fun. Talking Heads went on to release five more studio albums and the feature length concert film Stop Making Sense. The band eventually disbanded in 1991. Tina gave birth to her two sons during this productive time. She and Chris moved their family to Fairfield, Connecticut in 1985, where she has made giving back to her community a priority. Between 1981 and 2002, Tom Tom Club produced a total of six albums while touring internationally. In 2002, Talking Heads was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Tina being inducted is the pinnacle of what any artist could ever hope to expect in this genre. Tom Tom Club continued to produce music, releasing Genius of Live in 2010 and Downtown Rockers in 2012. I think Tina will be remembered as someone who really changed the way a bass part can be played. Sometimes her bass parts are funky, sometimes they're almost classical in their melodic structure. It's a gift that she has. I think people will remember this far into the future. I know that both groups are going to last. I hear the influences in the music being played by the young groups now. Not too many people even have one hit band, be they male or female, but Tina's had two. In fact, you could say twice in a lifetime.